Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 257 of the Ask Gary V Show. And I've gotta say this, and a lot of you who watch or listen to this show know, I just don't really consume a lot of content. I produce a shitload of content, and then I watch how people engage with it. But I'm very fired up to have our guest today because I'm really, I'm, besides watching the New York Jets, I think his television show is one of the few things I've consumed in the last three years. And I go on binges, right? Because they play it back to back to back to back. I remember I was in Canada once. Yeah, it was Canada once. And I stayed up from like midnight to four in the morning, back to back to back on who knows what channel they are. Um, John, I'm really excited you're here. Great to be here, guy. Big time. Why don't you tell the uh, Vayner Nation who you are and a little bit about your career and then uh, we'll answer some questions. Uh, And uh, I'm just, I'm really excited you're here. Uh, good to be here. You know, looking at your background, you and I have a similar background. So, you know, I didn't start in a wine business. I started in a restaurant business. Yes. And I started as a bartender. Yes. Became a general manager. Yes. Hotel manager, resort yes. food and beverage director, resort general manager. Did pretty much everything in the industry that I could. And I've been giving speeches at the nightclub and bar convention and all over the world. Because right? you have that kind of personality. I do. And, I'm a, and I give very good speeches. Right. And you get paid well for yep. it. So I was giving a speech at a convention. Somebody comes up to me one day and says, John, you should be on TV. So I wrote up a little piece called On the Rocks. On the Rocks. Went to a friend of mine who uh, ran Paramount Television. Yes. Sat down in the office and he looks at me and goes, John, you will never be on television. <laughs> You're too old. You're not good looking enough. Yes. He goes, forget it. So I walked out of that office with a vendetta. Yeah, chip so on I your went, shoulder. I shot my own sizzle reel. No, you did not. I did. Produced my own write-up of the show on my own. Brought the sizzle reel to four different production companies. Within five days, Gary, I had four offers. <laughs> the network picked up the show four days after I signed with a network, uh, uh, production company. And in less than a year from that guy saying to me, you will never, never be, be on television. television, the series premiered. What's that guy's name? Uh, uh, David Goldsmith. Hey, David Goldsmith, <laughs> you fucking lost this one. Completely. A good guy? So I must guy? tell you... A good guy, but I did send him a dozen <laughs> black roses. I love it. You know, to, to, just to button up the whole issue properly. John, for, for the couple, you know, we have a lot of you know people who might have not. Ca- What's the show like? You know, how many seasons? Uh, what network? Sure, it's on Spike. Uh, uh, we just finished. Which our is going to be rebranded, right? In January eighth, Spike gets rebranded as the Paramount Network. That's right. Which we're really excited about. Yep. The year in the Nogar. Yep. A- and uh, I started the show six years ago. We've done one hundred and forty-seven episodes. <laughs> Uh, uh, I just signed for 20 more, and we're getting into the record category in business transformation shows. Almost nobody's crossed 150, but Kitchen Nightmares never crossed 100. So, you know, none of these shows really make it past 100 episodes. So now, last season, about 90 million Americans watched it. It's now on 5,000 channels and five continents and six languages. And if you think it's intense to watch me in English, you should see me in Peruvian. <laughs> 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 it's something to see. It. How many but, of you have seen the show? Dunk, they don't play this in Sweden? No, I'm from Sweden. Okay, no worries. Guys, no, we're in Norway. We're in Norway. We you are need to move to Norway. Speak Norwegian? I do not speak yeah. Norwegian. But he, I believe it's in English in Norway, but he actually. But translates. I don't think you can be aggressive in Norwegian, so I... So, gotcha. John, I'll what, figure it out. John, yeah. t- <laughs> before we get into some Q&A, you know, the thing that stood out for me and probably why I associated with it, besides the fact that, you know, we're, we've got type A personalities and things. Forget about the personality, sh- shtick, <laughs> style, vibe, DNA. Take that completely over here. You're practical. Yeah. You're an operator. And it's real. I'm aware. I, yeah. I because I am only you know I, I think a lot of times people can get caught up in my sizzle, but it's the steak that I'm most proud of. Yeah. I'm an operator. Yeah. Like I think of it as a business. Like I can't, not that I can't lose. You can always lose, but I stay in my little narrow lane. I know what I know. And when I watched it, even with editing for television, I'm like, fuck, that's right. Yeah, he's right. Like and and you do a lot of EQ stuff. I do. Like, you know, I have 800 people that work for me. What probably also uh, attracted me, and I'm like, I like this guy. And whenever we first connected on Twitter, I'm like, yeah, let's. I want to get to know this dude. Is y- you operate, and it's about margins, and it's about shelf play, all this mm-hmm. stuff that I grew up in the liquor business, yep. right? It was yep. all that stuff. But it was also like, oh, that manager is insecure, so you're finished. So that per- like, it's to me the thing I'm most proud of is the content that I produce at scale. The reason I'm excited that people when they watch it is I if they can get over certain things with themselves, with me even, my style, if they, they'll they win. If they yes. listen, they'll win. Yes. And I believe that your show and you are powerful for that because I do believe when I watch it, as a person that will always win in business, if, if they listen, they will win. Well, you know what I've learned is every failing business has a failing owner, Gary. 
It's I always mean, the owner's given. fault. So, so if, if they have a failing owner, after 147 bar rescues, you know, guys like you and I were in everything about success. Yep. What do you do to be successful? Yep. The blocks are yep. success. The yep. planks are success. Blah, blah, blah. After 147 bar rescues, Gary, I've seen a depth of failure nobody's seen. Yeah. So, How many, John, so real quick, I'm, I apologize to interrupt yeah. you. How many, so I just did this show also for Apple, Planet of the Apps, where I'm helping these app developers, right? I was blown away by how much I gave a shit. Like, I didn't like it. I didn't like when I was mentoring them, like, this sucks, like, I really want them to win, and they're not, li- not that they weren't listening, actually, that's not true. It was more just like I wanted them to win. Is it, how long do you, sh- when you shoot an episode, like, how long are you in there? Four days. Like, when you hear, a year, you've done it six seasons, right? Yeah. When you hear through the grapevine, a random email, just when you hear, when your yeah. team hears, when you hear like, oh, Taco Johnny's became Hot Rod Johnny's and now it's, it failed. Hurts? Not or, really. or you're like a meritocracy and like you're okay, you understand Not that's real. the game. And, and, and I me, care. I get it, I know I you care. do. I, their I, houses are on I the line, it. I'm their last it. chance, yeah. they're weeks, they have enough money for weeks. Go ahead. There's an independent website that tracks my success. Is that right? It's called Bar Rescue Updates, and it was started to assassinate me. But now they're pretty honest and they're pretty straight about it. They have. Do you us genuinely tracking. believe it was started to like razz you? It was because I know I watched it when it when it first started. <laughs> Got it. Now it's now it's it's they're very fair. They have an advertiser base and they right, do before right, and after Yelp right, reviews and stuff. Right. So so they have That's me cool. tracking at a seventy-five to eighty percent success factor. That's amazing. Considering so, considering look. You're at 100% success factor for a guy like me. Just so you know, you're at 100%. It's just basic. It's the basic. It, it's basic to us because we've known it our whole lives. You're at 100% success rate to me. Your advice is always right. You're just at the mercy of Rick. Yes. And what happens with, with these people is they've made decisions that way for a long, long time, and they get stuck the in this that route. Three you know out of that. Four of them tasted what it should look like and had the ability to stay the course is phenomenal. But ha- why is that? And Tell that's me. worth picking apart for Let's a second. The two most powerful motivators we have is fear yes. and pride. Yes. So let's say you have a failing bar. Yeah. I'll start to play with pride because I got to change you to change this business. 100%. So I'm going to work pride. How would you feel if we're successful? How do you imagine? Right. Pr- yeah, yeah. Okay, that doesn't work. Now fear. What happens when you lose your fucking house? Yeah, you're a loser. Look at this picture of 100%. your kid. What happens when you can't? 100%. So I got to make them terrified to change. Do you guys, Do you got in real life versus TV life, which yeah. I think you've got a real show, but I assume, and tell me if I'm wrong, a lot of bars fail because a lot of times the owner like likes to drink. Yes. Cliche, it's almost right? like if you're into drugs right? becoming a pharmacist. Right, right? I mean, it makes no sense. It's real, it's right? Like, yes. Now, you guys try or too hard. Social. You guys try to right. You guys try right, buddy, right? You guys try to filter out that one variable, right? We do. Yeah, you know, that it, would make sense. That's so just smart. I, what I want to do makes is sense. I want I want to tell stories that people want to hear. 100%. So family dramas, yeah. partnership yeah. dramas, you know, it's Those intense. Are real. Those yeah. Are real. And it's very Shakespearean. Guy in trouble resists change, transforms himself, redeems himself in the end. It's really very Shakespearean if you think about it. Oh, are you kidding? And, and it's fucking, it's great TV, right? Like you pick yeah. up the tile and there's fucking worms everywhere and the fuck, like, so I wanna, so so I wanna tell you a shit, story. there's slugs everywhere, what the fuck? I wanna tell you a story I've never told before. Yes, so in guys, the fourth, we have exclusives here on episode 257 of the Gary Vee Show, go ahead. The fourth episode of Bar Rescue was shut down by the network. Really? And it was shut down by the network because I was doing my thing and a network executive came on set and tried to fake something. And that was, you and, lost your shit. And I told him to go fuck himself. 100%. Made him sit in a McDonald's You know who I do that to hours. all the time? D-Rock. Well, I can he's, see, just taking real, one look at him, a, I can see why you would do that. He's a real piece of shit. He tries to tell me what to do. Go so, ahead. So finishing the story, so, so they shut down the production. Now the senior VP of the network flies into Chicago to yes. talk to me, and he's walking me around the yeah. block. And he's like, and he says, Listen, you gotta John, understand. You can't tell the vice president of the network to go fuck himself. Right. You just can't do that. Right. So, so I took control of the show. They never did it again, and I've told them to go fuck themselves now about four or five other times. Makes now, sense. Now, they're wonderful, but what happens is, and I'm not putting them down at all. They're I know, great I know people. We, listen, they have Production their job, you have yours. Production wants to know what's gonna happen before it happens. You can't. And I won't do that. I can tell. So there's a push and pull that's constantly going on between us to protect that reality. And I'm guessing you can re- relate to it. Well, but I if it wasn't studied. for the reality, we wouldn't have lasted this long. 100%. And, and, and I do think, you know, I wouldn't have you sitting here. I'm, I'm stunned that you guys, I, that story makes a ton of sense to me because being empathetic to that universe, um, you guys have been able to pull it off. It's really cool. I'm glad Thank you're you. here. Let's Thank ask. You. Let's get some questions going. Before, so Andy's going to get some questions. We're going to answer some of them. But before we do that, where'd you grow up? 
Great Neck, Long Island. And Not so, far from here. Please, John, please tell me you're a Jets fan. I am a Jets fan. Tell the truth. Don't bull. No, right, I will get crazy on I'm you right show now. show my age. Back to the Joe Namath days. Well, I get I'm a that. Jets fan. So, so how old were you in, 19, in January 12th, 1969? In 1969, I would January have been... January 12th. 17. So you really were in a prime year when they won That's it. what I'm saying. Were you walking around? I remember like, yeah, it big time. I remember course. Miami Street. I remember it big time. Were you a Knicks fan? So, so I was a Knicks fan as well. Were but those were the fan? days of the Busher and Clyde. And, and you were and, a Mets and, fan too? And, and I was or a Yankees. big Mets fan because I lived on Long Island. We would take right. the Long Island Railroad to so, Shea Stadium. We John, used to watch Kingman Blasts that would stay in the so air literally like four minutes. <laughs> 69 70, you literally won an NBA, NFL, and World Series championship. That's correct. You were the king of the world. I thought so. Yeah, I guess. But it. how do you not be a Jets fan after going through that at 17 years old? Oh, oh, you're a Jet fan for life. Namath after that. was like the the uh, he's like McGregor times a thousand. And cool as hell. Well, that's the point. Yeah. McGregor's pretty cool. Who's this? Yeah. Nick from New Jersey. You sure? Because it doesn't sound like it's dialing anymore. Nick. Yeah. Bro, what's up, man? What, what part of Jersey are you from? Wildwood. 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 Man, I, I spent a summer there once for five minutes. A lot of people did, right? There you go. I figured you'd know it from where you're from. Say hello to John. Hey, How man. How you doing, John? I saw you on there. Yeah. What's your question, my friend? I, um, just started a new restaurant, and it's funny you have him on there. Cause no shit. I didn't know that. Yes. But uh, the best way to get it out there without spending a fortune. Where you, Where is it before John asks his questions? It's in Wildwood, which is a resort town. Of we course. Got a few months to do what we do. Yep. Um, Are you open already? I had a restaurant before. Yeah, yeah, and I had a restaurant before uh, with a partner. I walked away from that with nothing, threw yep. everything against the wall. Yep. I know it'll stick. Uh, <clears throat> I got faith in the risk, but uh, I need to get it out there. Okay, and so in, in your business, let me get to the point for you. In your business, you got to pull the eye, then pull the body, then pull their wallet. You don't get the wallet until you have the eye and the body first. So you gotta look at the exterior, the front of your business and make sure you're drawing attention. Just off the top of my head, what's your fit, what is this food item you're known for? Uh, actually burgers, gourmet burgers. So you're putting out the best burgers in the world. I would create eight or 10 picket signs, wooden poles with cardboard signs, say world's best hamburgers, price is unfair to competition, bun softest in town, best burger or it's free, I would positive picket in front of your restaurant for five consecutive days. Make sure people see you, understand your commitment to quality. It'll make a difference. Hopefully the newspaper will pick it up with a photo. Uh, they will. They already did last year when I was with the partner and I was the operational one. So they'll be back. So look, I think uh, the, the, my version of that, which is all right and, and definitely the way I grew up, is I want you to go to Instagram and type in Wildwood, New Jersey and search it and see the nine trending pictures on Instagram right now and I want you to either DM or comment the individuals that are there because usually if they're one of the nine most popular, they're the people that um, are, are over indexing, have the biggest audience and I want you to one-on-one -on -one engage with them at scale and then and then really win your, re a lot of times we talk about hashtags on Instagram, yeah. but I think that there's a big white space to search by location and engage with the people in that location. I think you could basically pull eyes and bodies into your restaurant by engaging virtually through people that are putting up content virtually, especially these three months, and you could do it hand-to-hand -hand combat digitally. Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm new to the internet game too. I gotta do stuff all stuff Well, I got good news. Head. It's not a fad. The shit's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Gary. You're welcome, Gary. my man. I appreciate Take it. care. Talk all to you right. soon. Good guy. Look at the Jersey flame. I love this. That was some East Coast shit right there for everybody who's watching. Let's get another call. Talk to me about your journey on, on social. Are you doing your Twitter? Is your team? It's okay, I just yeah. wanna know. We, we, we started doing it and honestly, you know, in, in our profession, yeah. we, we're in a bar business, yes. we're in hospitality yes. business. We're not in the social media I business. I get it, I get it. So we've gone through four or five different agencies. Understood. And found the process extremely frustrating. Understood. So we've brought it in-house, we've taken it out-house. Out -house, we've yep. brought it in-house, yep. we've taken it out-of-house. Yep. We've never parked it in a place where I can actually feel good about it. To Understood. Be you. Are you, and it's tough to keep it you, in my voice as well. Gary. Are you, are you just, adamantly against doing it yourself? Is it hard, it doesn't come natural? No, it's it's that I, I travel 40 weeks a year, I shoot 12 hours a day, and, and it's just, it's hard to, to allocate the time to do it. On the other hand, you'll tell me, John, you're crazy not to allocate yeah, the time Yeah, and I'm also to gonna it. tell what you tell the other business owners, and, right? In a 2017 environment with, you know, what's ironic is, 
you are so built for it, it's scary. But th- I'm in a bar guy. You're you're in a social media. You know what's space. funny? No, so I've never perfected it. And yeah, honestly, but you're, you know what you are? You're a communicator. You're a bar guy who happens to be a phenomenal communicator. It's why you spoke in the first place, which led to the TV show in the first place. I genuinely believe in the same way that you've taught operators the cadence of doing the right thing, that if you actually bit, you know, you bit the bullet and you did it for a week or two, you would, it would come so unbelievably natural based on your DNA. Hmm. I really mean it. And just do it in a casual, intimate sense. Be you. In the moment. I don't know, tell people to go fuck themselves. Just in I mean, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, like, look, you can't, you can't lose. And I think once you actually taste it for real, mm-hmm. it'll come as natural to you as it came to me. Because guess what? I was 32 years old. It wasn't like I grew up with this shit. I was on a computer five minutes in my entire life until I was 20. Like, it's about communication. And you've got that pouring out of your fucking eyes. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You've inspired me. Well, thank you. I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I'm going to start doing this. Uh, uh, uh. I'm fired up. Yeah, no, You're I'm not, pumped. So, so, you are pumped. So, you are so, so happy with me right now. He is. He's been pushing me to do this for a long time. You're going to kill it. On Twitter, you're gonna kill. You're gonna kill it. You know, it's, it's interesting how I can be comfortable in front of 90 million Americans on right. TV, but that phone and the yeah, social media sense. environment, it makes I'm sense. not. It makes And you know this, right? We're great at our lanes, but we know that we're not as comfortable in other lanes. I just know that it's the context of it because your ability in it is gonna dominate. You're gonna find yourself on Wi-Fi on the plane, engaging on Twitter left and right. I mean, asking you, you should have now, I engage in Twitter, I engage yep. in Facebook, yep. and I type and I answer yep. as many as I can. I lo- you'll kill but with what that. what I'm not doing is I'm not using my camera very often, yeah, and, and I'm know, not going live very often. I'll tell often. you where you, don't worry about live for a minute. You know where you can crush? I would die, and a bunch of people watching would die to follow this. As you're walking through the airport, you see a restaurant front facing, you take a picture, and you leave your two cents. You know how many people would love that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Great coloring on the letter. Shit signage. Got it? Yeah. You'll die. Great idea. That's a great idea. You got content everywhere. Listen, I'm okay. So I can be a dick all day long and critique people. Can you imagine? (laughs) And on the flip side, you know the way the show's edited. I think you you can you can create a second path, which is on social, maybe you go the path of like showing things that you think are done well. Because first of all, let's think about this. You're going through, you're walking through New York City, you see something you think is well. You take a picture, you go, this was extremely well executed. When you when that bar sees that, they share it. This, that, you see where I'm going. I do, it's yeah. brilliant, it's brilliant. Well, who's coming in now? Kevin from Chicago. Kevin from Chicago. Let's see what Kevin from Chicago, I'm fired up now, John. I think you're gonna dominate. You got me fired up. I think you're gonna hit me up in like four months and be like, fuck, I should have done yeah. it. You know, Kevin? Hello? Kevin, this is Gary V and you're in the Ask Gary V Show. Gary, my man. How are you? <laughs> Amazing, how are you? Good, bro. You're on with John. Can you say hello? Hey, John. What's going on? Hey, buddy. How are you? Kevin, you're chill as fuck. <laughs> yeah, man. Do we wake you up? <laughs> Did you smoke like a fucking fat blunt? Like, what's going on here, Kevin? You're chill, bro. <laughs> I'm trying my best not to freak out right now. Okay, got it, okay. got it, got it. What's your question? All right, so my brother's 13th birthday is coming up in July. Okay. And I was wondering if you had any ideas, like, what kind of gift to give him that would be, like, very good for his life and life-changing. Okay, so what's his story at 13 right now? Uh, love basketball. Starting to go through puberty, voice changing. Is, is, he, on in, is he on Instagram? No, he's not. He's on Snapchat. I love Snapchat. So I have an idea. For his 13th birthday, I think you should have him create his Instagram account. And my friend here, Dunk, who has 2 million followers in the basketball space, 2.2 million, is going to give him a shout out and send people his way. That's great. He'll shit his pants. Yeah. And link to his favorite players and, and, and create a whole community around John, him. it's better than that. He'll get like, like 4,000 followers on Instagram and not know what to do with himself. Kev, that's yeah, why I think. It's a done deal. Email me at Gary at VaynerMedia. Dunk sells these things for like fifty thousand dollars. I just gave you fifty thousand dollars, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dunk. You're welcome. Dunk. <laughs> very excited. <laughs> he was very excited about it. Indeed. Kevin, thanks for calling. <laughs> I mean, we just made a thirteen-year-old's life. I hope, uh, Kevin, if you're if you're uh, Gary at VaynerMedia.com, Dunk, you're the best. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I know you are because you're the best. You're a good dude. Um, while Andy's getting another call. What, uh, what in your career growing up, what was the best run organization 
that you worked in before you went on to the next part of the show. What was the place where you like really learned how to, you know, you, a lot of places I'm sure you learned how not to do it, but where was, the, where was a place that really, who was a great operator, what was a great experience for you early on? Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't somebody I worked for, it was somebody I worked with. Okay. And, and you'd be surprised by the answer, and it's going back a number of years, but Disney. <laughs> That's not surprising to me at all. I mean, Keep talking. Disney's commitment I want people to, hear to this. employee orientation. I mean, Disney, you don't wear uniforms, you wear costumes. You don't work in a station, you work on a stage. Every door is a stage door to the front of the house, to the back of the house. You never break character. Their depth of training was incredible. Even a janitor, the guy who sweeps yeah. up, they knew that he would get more questions than anyone. So he knew everything. The answer, info, their depth of training and commitment. You said you was worked wonderful. with. Yes. Under what context? What was the story back then? Is I'm I'm not permitted to publicly understood. Stages, understood. Where I non-disclosure. No worries. But, but we worked with them on. That's some awesome. Yep. Sounds really cool. Uh, and what about what about early on? Uh, what brought you into the industry? Just like literally, just making two bucks an hour? Like you were just like that's no, how I was you going stum- into politics. Believe it or not, I went to university of Denver, started tending bar, but I had two loves. Uh, politics and cultural anthropology, which you'll find mm, interesting. Course, so I love on. the study of primates and animal societies, which are just like us. So I've learned to analyze people, and my crew calls it Dr. John, but I can analyze somebody in seconds because their you. landing point defines everything. 100%. You know, do you land in selfish interest? Do you land in gracious interest? Where do you land? Because where you land is truly you. Then you try to fix it after that. That's right. <laughs> so, so you know, it's all very primal. And, yeah, no, and that's helped me a lot in my other careers. Clearly, I mean, I brought up earlier, even through the editing process of a television show, it was interesting and obvious to me that you traded on EQ, what I would call EQ, emotional yeah. intelligence. It's I all do. people behavior. Like, I've got a very good read on everybody who I interact with very quickly as well, yeah. predicated on just, it's pretty basic. If, if, if it comes natural to you, if you've learned it, things of that nature. You got something? Yep. What's your problem over here? Going a little slow. I'm just waiting for you guys. Respect. Who's this? Glenn from Vista, California. Glenn from California? Okay. Let's see what Glenn's got for us, John. <clears throat> Glenn, you're on the Ask Gary oh. V show. Oh, shoot. This is crazy. It sure is. How's California? Oh, it's freaking amazing. You see the weather out here? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? So, um, all right. Well, first, say, first, pl- so, first please uh, say hello to John T. Hey, how, how you doing? hey, Gary. How you doing, man? Doing great. So, um, I do a YouTube channel. Um, I have about 24k subscribers. I have about uh, 50k on my Facebook. Doing pretty well. Yep. Um, only been doing it for a year and a half. Um, it's called Belief and Fatherhood. If you don't, you can shout it out. But anyway, um, I I just did a deal with Apple. Apple was like, hey, I love your picture. I love this picture that you use on uh, Instagram. It'd be dope if we could use it for our campaign worldwide. So literally, there are 90 billboard-sized pictures of my son around the world. That's amazing. I'm trying to figure out, yeah, it's great. So I, I know that this is just like a, it's a cool thing, you know what I'm saying, to happen, but I know it doesn't really give me anything besides the money that we got off top. You know, right, right. Which is cool, but I'm trying to figure out how to leverage this opportunity uh, into something bigger and to put some more brands, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I, do know, I do know what you're Guess saying. Guess where he is? Where? No, in other words, you oh. could have some type of an online activity that's interactive where you could guess where he is, locate him, and something along those kind of lines to create engagement. So, Not bad? So, yeah, I mean, so what, real quick, how, how old's the child? Uh, he's four. So, he's adorable. It's, it's I'm sure he's adorable. <laughs> I mean, um, so it's interesting. So, so one more time, because I want to make sure I heard this right. Apple's a- Apple obviously licensed the image from you that they saw online through through right. what through Facebook or Instagram. Just I want to get all the details Instagram. here. Okay. Through a freaking hashtag. Only thing I ever hashtag. Wild. Uh, and they bought the rights to the photo, obviously, and they're using it in how many billboards and how many markets? I want to hear it one more time. Ninety different billboards across around the, the around the world. And so you're saying to yourself, okay. My four-year-old son is on 90 billboards. I t- you took the photo? I took the photo. And you're thinking about how do I leverage this opportunity, right? Right, and, and, and keep in mind, like, though I have very low numbers, like you know, 24K is in a lot, you know, if I, if I put up a, a video for our ad on Facebook, it, it gets two or three million views. You know what I'm saying? So I can, I can create very heartfelt stuff for the black community, for, for church folk and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to present this to brands better because I have all these working relationships, but 
but I can't get like, you know, real money. You know what I'm saying? Of course I know, because brands oftentimes are paying for distribution and are commoditizing out creative and you're playing in a creative world and obviously you've shown some distribution capabilities. Let's take it a step back. What, what bucket do you wanna put this talent into? Like what do you wanna build? Do you wanna build an agency? Do you wanna build a product? I think one of the things that, back to the way, you know, the reason John's shaking his head now, these are practical questions. I think the, the, the model of I wanna get brands to pay me more for branded posts on social networks is fine and I think is an emergingly massive market but you're also at the vulnerability of the platforms, the terms of service changing, the market behaviors. I think the question becomes, what, what do you want to do with your creative talents? Are you trying to build a service business? Are you tr- trying to build a product business? Are you trying to build a personal brand where a you can- Father advocacy you, business? That's right. Like, it could be something on those right. as well. Where, where do you want to take it? I, I think you have to make those decisions on where you want to- Go ahead. Yeah, so I want to be, uh, you know, the, the, the thought leader on parenting uh, five years from now. Everything I do with these vlogs and these videos only shows my validity and how um, I can speak on these topics as a father from the father perspective and as a husband. So okay. six, seven years from now when CNN is having some issue with parenting, they can bring in and talk to me about it. I understand. Uh, but in the short term, I need to make financial, I need to make mm-hmm. some money. You know I understand. I, of, so, course, of course I do. Well, advocacy ahead, and money don't always travel hand in hand together. So, you know, I, I know from one, and this is just my view, uh, uh, if you want to monetize this, then, you know, you need money for charity. No money, yeah. no charity. So you start with the monetization and then you build to the advocacy. I don't think it's the other way around. Would you agree, Gar? Yes, but I think what he's asking is a little bit, it's a little bit interesting what he's up to. So, so real quick, you've been able to make some money from brands on creating content on your personal profiles? Yes, sir. How much? Like five hundred dollars a post, like that kind of numbers? Nine, nine hundred. Yep. Um, yeah. So, John, do you know this phenomenon? There's like we we believe that it's a two to three billion dollar market of people with large social network accounts, mainly on Instagram and Facebook, where brands will pay them for, you know, in essence, commercials, like a mm-hmm. post, you know, advertorial. Yes. As the way we grew I've up. I've had with those it, right? requests on my I'm page. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. So, I look. I think there's a. I think there's a couple ways to do this. I've got a very rogue, answer for you. Are you self? Okay. Are, are you trying to make this your full time living? Do you have a job currently as well? I, I came from hip hop. I'm trying to get out of hip hop. I'm moving toward fatherhood because it's understood. It's, but know, when you say you came yeah. from hip hop, do you have a job right now, or are you trying to live your life through? No. Bra- okay, I'm gonna throw you for a curve. How old are you? I'm 32. So, when you become the person that the big media companies in six or seven years call for fatherhood in your genre, things of that nature. Is your plan to get a million dollar book advance, to get paid $40,000 to give speeches? Are you looking to ultimately, okay. I would tell you that I think you should get a job. And I think you should get a, I think you should get a job for somebody who's a personal brand. I think you should look under the hood. The great advantage, the thing that allowed John and I to sit here today and have all these people watching and listening is we did the thing for decades before we talked about the thing. Yeah. I believe that if you got a 45,000, an 80,000, a 9,000, I'm not gonna speak to your finances, but I believe if you worked the nine to six, nine to seven to be the social media guy for any personal brand, whether it's in your genre or not, and it probably won't be in your genre, an athlete, an actress, a, a politician, if you could see somebody, I'm a big fan of working for somebody who's doing the thing that you want to do, you get to see everything under the hood. And I would love to see you get, pay your bills and learn the do's and the don'ts and then use that platform to build yourself up. I'm a very big advocate of the advice that I'm giving and let me be clear. I know it's taking yeah. a step backwards to, to, to take two steps forward. A lot more fun to kind of sell your $900 post here, your $800 post there, but I genuinely believe that a year or two of that work could become disproportionately powerful because what you're gonna do is I love when I see what Dunk does or he sees what I do and then you work it on your account. Like, it's incredible yeah. to like see the do's and don'ts and I think that there's a way for you to possibly get that job um, and then build off of that and that's just one way to go about it. The, by the way, the other way is to keep scrapping. You just, also, I, I just got to say something. As a father please. of a twenty-eight-year-old, I'm just not sure you're an authority of being a father when you have a four-year-old. Talk well, to me when he's fifteen. This, 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 this is the thing. 
Like people, people want, they see me as successful because they see how well behaved my children are. But they don't realize that I still have to raise a 30 year old. You know what I'm saying? Like he has to get the 30 in order for me to be considered a success. So I'm kind of in a weird position where um, people want to see what it's like to uh, be proof that fatherhood is even something that they want because they don't believe in it because they, you know, some people don't have their fathers around. So yeah, no. I th- listen, you, I, think, I think John's right and I think you're right, right? Which is why I created that whole genre of document don't, you know, document don't yeah. create. All these people faking it saying I'm a great father right. instead of look, here, you here's know, the proof. I've been really pushing my audience, John, to like, hey, faking that you're an expert at bars because you worked in one for a year and you wanna be known as that because it sounds cool or it seems like you can make money that way is fine. You're gonna trick a couple of losers. Winners are gonna look mm-hmm. at it. I mean, you, as a winning- I'll A-type, see through in a you, minute. You, yeah, you jumped in right away and said, wait a minute, bro, your kid's four. Right. But what right. I think he's doing and, and, and culturally he's painting a picture, exactly. that's right. He's like, I have a four-year-old and that's where I'm at now. So listen, I, listen, I think you've got two options. A couple of options, you've got probably way more than that. I think the thing that you can do is deploy massive patience, produce far more content that you're producing now, you know, hustle more, produce tons of content, and build a very slow burn for seven, eight years. I did five episodes a day of Wine Library TV in 2006 for, I don't know, four years before it kind of like meant a little something. Four years every day, you know, pumping yeah. out that show daily, five days a week. You know. I think a lot of you in my audience know, a lot of you have just discovered me in January. I've been putting out content on the internet every single day for a decade. For a decade. Yeah. At scale. Successfully. So I think, I think you either deploy patience and make your 900 here, your 100 here, your 500 here. One month is 4,000, you feel like you got it. The next month it goes to 80 bucks, you're like what the fuck? Or you take the route that I painted first which is do you go and get a job as a social media content person for a very famous athlete or actor or actress so you could see it at a higher plane so you see what it tastes like at the $10,000 post at the $100,000 speaking engagement so that you're like okay that's what it takes to get there. Got it? Or you do both. Got it. It's funny that's the same advice I would give to somebody who asked that question about the bar business. I believe you, man. Go to work for the best one you can find in town. You know, work for an example and learn from that example. Same deal. Glenn, I appreciate you calling, man. Good luck to you. Keep hustling. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you. John, you know what's interesting, right? Like, it's it's fun for me to hear you say that right now because literally, I mean, I think that's generally what attracted, why, I mean, fuck, to watch four hours. Uh, I always watched around Thanksgiving and Christmas, too. I felt like they were always doing marathons. I was watching my family. I'm like, let's all watch this. Like, it was, you know, it's just, like, it's unbelievable how if people deployed patience, they could get what they want. They just don't want to. They want yeah. passive income, quick. Well, there is no quick. It took you a long time no, to monetize your work, no, didn't it? Nobody's got quick. Yeah. Nobody's. Beyonce's been dancing, fucking singing, she's through like four. Like every athlete outside of the super freaks, like 88% of them, it's the hard, and by the way, there's the 400 best football, baseball, and basketball players on natural talent aren't in the league because they didn't work hard enough. Well, you don't become a household name for no reason. I believe that too. In almost no case. I, I'm, a, takes, I'm a big believer. It takes believer. a lifetime to get to that point and in position your brand and that way. And it's talent and hard work. Listen, I could and work. substance. 100%. I could work really, really hard at baseball. Like, real hard. 18 hours a day. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Like, there's a little self-awareness in it. That's why I love business and entrepreneurship. It gives everybody a little bit more of a chance. It's not a physical attribute. I mean, it's a mental one, but one more. Last one. Let's do this. Who's this? Glenn. Sorry. Oh, Glenn again? Chandler. No. Chandler. Chandler Parsons? Chandler Miles. Okay, all right. Understood. Hello, this is Chandler. Chandler, this is Gary Vee on your ass, and you are on the Ask Gary Vee Show. Hey, how are you doing? Doing really well. Please say hello to my phenomenal guest, John. Hey! Hey, John, what's up, man? How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I got to tell you guys, you're both uh, idols of mine, so this is all. Sounds like you're a very smart man. Yes, obviously a man of great taste. Great, yeah. clearly. <laughs> you are a winner. Yeah, Chandler, you are a winner. Uh, what, can we, what can we help you with? Yeah, so I run a barbecue restaurant. This in, is uh, great. Kentucky, and you guys are marketing geniuses, both of you. Um, so just, you know, what advice do you have for small guys like me, you know, competing with the big guys out there? John, before you answer that, Chandler, can you give us a little more context? How many years? What kind of revenue? Like, give, give us something yeah. to give you a real answer. I mean, we could give real good answers yep. to that question, but here we are, right? Let's go. Yep. Let's go even right. a little further. Give us a little more context. How long you open? How yeah. much you doing in sales? Sure. So, uh, we started as a food tent. Uh, 
a couple years nice. back, worked our way up to a gas station. Love it. Uh, after that, um, we actually just closed that location to open our next location, which is a real location now. So, um, yeah, we do about a million dollars in sales. Good for you. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we're just, we, we've done a lot of social media stuff to this point, but, you know, it seems like, I don't know. I, I, it's been I, tapped I, out? We, we, we hit a plateau. Yeah, you know happens. I mean? Like, we're, we're getting ready to bring a video guy on full time. Uh, Where's your location? Is your, how, how, you f- how, how you feeling about your location? Uh, our new location is really strong, um, but you know I'm 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 one of those guys. Like what we're doing now is plenty to make enough money. The problem is, is that we're just like I always want more. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> so, always trying to do better. I don't want to get complacent. I really feel like we just hit flat. So, uh, how many cars go by each day? What's your traffic count? Okay, so so you're on a road that would qualify for a national franchise. So he's got some good potential based upon the traffic on that road. You know, I'm going to say something, and yeah. I, th- I think Gary's going to agree with me. You know, we're not in the in the uh, content business. We're not in the restaurant business. You're not in the barbecue business. We're all in the business of creating reactions. When a post mm-hmm. creates a reaction, it works, doesn't it? Hundred percent. When it creates no reaction, it doesn't work. So the post isn't the product. The reaction is the product. The post is the vehicle. To you, barbecue isn't a product. Barbecue is a vehicle. The product is a reaction. Are people reacting well? Are they sitting up when the food hits the table? Are their feet tapping to the music you're playing? How are your guests reacting to what you're doing? Yeah, everything reaction-wise has been fantastic. You know, they're all my mom's recipes, all homemade. We like to joke she was farm to table before it was hip. <laughs> uh, you know, she grew up on a farm in South Georgia. But yeah, I mean, people love the food. So you got a story. online. Yeah, yes, so yeah. you have a story, and the most powerful asset to marketing, particularly to millennials these days, is to have a story. Is that story online? Do people know that story? Your mother's recipe? Uh, uh, are you creating curiosity online and in a marketplace to try your mom's recipes? I think we're. I'm, pro- I'm, the, I'm the guy that does the marketing. I'm probably dropping the ball on not really hammering home uh, the mom side of it. Not, not only that, you're not hammering home shit because you haven't posted on Instagram in four days. Uh, you, are, you are right about that. I'm aware. And so to me, you hit a, you know, hitting a plateau from a marketing standpoint, like you as somebody who's got such a great piece of, you have food for Instagram. Like, you've been right. given a gift. I'm working with people that have concrete companies, like like fencing, like doorknobs. You have barbecue food in Kentucky. Like, you should be posting right. four times a day on Instagram, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and you're not. So for me, you haven't tapped out anything. You haven't even started. But it's even more than that. I'd, I'd be posting pictures of the smoker, the product smoking, the raw product, you know, making real quality statements in what you're doing. You've got to create curiosity so people want to walk mm-hmm. through the front door and taste it. And Chandler, when you have a baby that ridiculously cute sitting next to you and working on the business, like this is, you, you, so you wait a minute, you've got barbecue in Kentucky, which allows you to speak about a lot of things like sports and other things. It doesn't have to always be about the food, right? You could talk about the, the basketball team and things of that nature. Or the recruits, a hundred percent, brother. If like you that. if you literally post and use the hashtag, whoever Kentucky recruited, and I promise you, five of them are superstars, and you use their hashtag of those five, I promise you that people are going to discover that because they're clicking that hashtag. Kentucky, bas- Kentucky remind, basketball, it's Forget religion. About it. It is it's religion. religion. So yeah, I absolutely right. do. Like when I look at your Instagram and, and great job by Andy here, like pulling up your stuff, like we haven't even begun here, right? And right. you could do one day just on the beans, one day just on the coleslaw, like one day just on the beans, like four right. pieces right. of content just on the beans. Are the beans good? Man, that's so easy to do too. I mean, you're 100 right because it's all made from scratch. So the essence of making stuff from scratch is a story. Chandler, are the I beans also- good? You can see the path there. Yeah, I mean, they're the best fucking beans on the planet. Dude, I love beans. So I got to tell you something. I'm looking at your page right now, and and there's a bottom left picture, which I got to tell you guys, is one who takes professional food pictures. That picture sucks. And the reason why is you're showing little unimportant things. You got to come in on the meat. You got to show the juiciness, the thickness of the ribs. You did a good job here on this one. Right, like what is yes. that? That's a hush poppy, right? But you're getting closer to the product. You can see the crisp, the flavor. Try to make these right. pictures a little closer. Try to get people to connect. Those are look, okay, but about, that's almost a little too shit. close. There you go. That's some shit right there. Look at right. the U.S. Air Force. Is there a base nearby? 
Uh, no, not here. And this, okay. and this post on May 14th, the one that said Happy Mother's Day, right? You know, yeah. you, you've got the Mother's Day hashtag, but there's no other hashtags that you used, right? You could have, right. so like, you gotta get into best practices too. And remember, right, you called in, that means you know me. And I always say, watch yeah. what I'm doing, not what, I, what I'm saying. And like, you know that I'm treating my Instagram very differently than you're treating your Instagram, right? Right, yeah. I mean, I guess I, um, I, I, I guess I just had to double down on. I mean, I'm not. I guess for our market, I'm just not believing in Instagram, but that's probably dumb. So I mean, we it's not. It's not. It's Facebook not, advertising. We really go into that, but yeah. I mean, know, I, look, I, look. It's not about being dumb or not, or it being dumb or not. It's, it's, it's mapping your output to your ambition. You've achieved something incredible. Well, I'll explain. You've achieved something incredible. Most people will never build a business that does a million dollar years in revenue, right? Well, and I have no like idea about a million plus. Million plus. <laughs> God bless, right? To me, yeah, yeah, to right. me, I just heard from you. You opened this, and let's rewind it. That said, you're still hungry, and like you, right. you I'm. Ne- Listen, you got a little one at home. I'm not telling you how to do your work life balance. I'm not telling you. You do you. Here's what I can tell you: by looking at your. Facebook and YouTube and Instagram in a 2018 environment around food culture that is completely being dominated by consumption online, I don't think your actions are speaking to you being hungry. Okay, so what, um, I, I know you, your answers always do everything, right? Yes to everything, but you know, obviously Instagram. You yes. Know, what are the two other things I can do in 2017 to set us up right for 2018? So again, I think you know, watch what I do and and not what I say. I think you should be. Right. Du- I think you should literally get an intern from a local high school or college if you can't afford it, or if you can't afford it, or you have a relative. I think they should literally film you every single day, and you should put out a piece of content for thir- you know three minute, seven minute, nineteen minute video on a day to day basis. Lyle's barbecue day to day, every single day. From those videos, I think you should do four posts on Instagram, seven on Twitter five on Facebook, and I think you should start a barbecue podcast, Kentucky Barbecue Podcast, and put out a show once a week on audio. Above and beyond working every day. And taking care of your little guy. If you're as hungry as you fucking say you are. But if you were, then you would have posted, and that four day gap wouldn't exist, because you That's posted right. before but, the but four I, days. But I'm, John, I'm empathetic. He's. De- Chandler's deemed that you know that's not as important. Facebook ads are working better, and Chandler, you know what's fun to talk to you is you know my spiel, which is like fine, that's doing better now, but it's also because you're not doing Instagram right. well. Right. No, absolutely. You're you're right about that. We uh, we just need to go back to doing some homework and and, and get into practice. And you're 100 percent right. I want to add one more uh, thing, if I can, for you. If sure. you can increase your guest frequency by one visit a month, that's a 12 to 15 percent increase in revenue. Right. One visit more per month is 12 to 15%. It's huge. You need to work on that as well. So you need to have the frequency programs in place. You need to have programs to get people that come midweek back on weekends. People that have a propensity to come on weekends, to come back midweek. You need to work this uh, uh, in a more immediacy type of a way. You've got to increase frequency as well, especially in a market like yours where you can only get too many, so many new customers. You got a lot of barbecue in your area. So, sure, yeah, so, no, so sometimes it isn't a question of adding more customers. Sometimes it's a question of adding more customers and more frequency. And that's the right. combo that together will make you much more successful. There's also an insight well, to the well, way you... Go ahead, really fast. Yeah, really quick. This, go ahead. In, in, in restaurant business, you know, pricing is, is key. Now, and I know, like, with us being a fast casual restaurant, John, where do you think the price point needs to be average ticket-wise? Well, I, I'm under the belief that we're, because we make everything from scratch, we're priced just a little bit higher, and you know we do a lot to try to differentiate ourselves with marketing and, and telling stories on Facebook and things, but we're well, going to have to do better, obviously, it sounds like. But what price point do you think, and does that play into it at all? Well, let's say you were st- selling a steak for uh, 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 half the price of somebody else, and somebody comes up to you and says, your steak is too expensive. They're not saying it's too expensive because they pay twice the price for a steak someplace else. They're telling you your steak is not worth the price. So I don't think you should ever lower your price. You need to make the statements that provide the value commensurate with that price. So are you saying the things, recipe, spec, our best ribs are the best in the world, the medius, it falls off the bone. You You don't have an absolute value issue. You have a value perception issue. And there's a difference between perceived value and absolute value. 
So right here. I wouldn't lower your prices. Right I would build my value statements. I, and what's right. interesting about that advice is there was something in the way that you were communicating about Facebook versus Instagram. I would highly recommend you think about branding versus sales. Too many people, sure. no. when they're, right? It's, it's you know, to, well, yeah. it, you know, if that's the case, you, I could just tell that you're a smart enough man to know a shitload of eyeballs are on Instagram. Right, yeah. So yeah. all, you know, no, so, they, they go are. ahead. No, I was gonna say they are. I, I guess I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I'm doing that stupid thing where people like justify that it's not happening in their area or, um, but it's happening everywhere else. Yeah, this, like this whole notion that ran through your mind right. that, Nobody in fucking Lexington, Kentucky is on Instagram is ludicrous. You know, honestly, what you're doing is you're assuming an excuse, which is worse sure. than making an excuse in and of itself. Yeah, I mean, you don't assume anything until you know it. That's what's exciting right. about this environment and the things that you're doing is you can test all of these. And it's not only what you do, it's how you do it, as Gary's saying, to make it more work effectively. But don't make the excuse out of the gate. Because then you're going to discount your initiative and your effort before you start. It's so, it's interesting. Sure. I believe so much in driving people to your. If you've got quality, the cost of acquisition is something that is fascinating to me. So, for example, we're about to do something at Wine Library, my family business. We have a huge gourmet department. I want to continue to build it right. up, and we're about to create something called Free Food Friday. Like we're going to give away a fuckload of free food. Like, just like, I don't know, show up between this three hours and we're gonna give you a $20 food gift certificate. And the truth is, the cost of acquisition for us, that $20, because we know our business is so much better than a lot of other people's sure. business, that we can make that ROI positive in a two or three year window. I am fascinated, now look. Can I make that please? work for him? I do exactly the same thing Go in ahead. a different way. Go ahead. If you buy a guest through traditional media, yep. the cost of that guest is typically 40 to $80. Bingo. If you, so let's say your rib dinner costs you $5, food costs, the ribs, yep. the potato, the platter, the yep. whole thing. I would give out 100 coupons for a free rib dinner to people that have never been there before. No restrictions. So now, yep. Gary walks up to the front door with a coupon. I got a coupon for a free rib dinner. Never been here before. Come on in. First of all, I don't pay till they come. Yep. Second, I'm paying $4.65, not $40 to $60 per each customer. That's right. And then here's something that nobody else will tell you. If somebody goes to a restaurant for the first time and has a flawless experience, the statistical likelihood of them doing a second visit is about 40%. They come yeah, back a second time and have a flawless experience, the statistical likelihood of a third visit is still about 42%. The third time they come, the statistical likelihood of a fourth visit is over 70%. So, wow. you gotta market to three visits, not one. Visit one free wow. rib dinner. You sit them down, put a red napkin on the table, not a white one. Identify them as a first time customer, connect with them and work to get them back a second time and a third time. Once they're there the third time, you own them. My man Chandler. The red napkin thing is genius. Let let me but let me give you let me give you channel. So, let me can give I you, detail that go for ahead, him? Go ahead. Okay, so you put a red napkin at the table. Gary sits down. He's eating dinner. Now he's getting his free rib dinner. Orders water. Costs him nothing. I know he's right. a first time customer because he's got a red napkin. When he's leaving, the manager comes to the table, writes on the back of a business card, five dollars off chicken. Did you like the ribs? Loved them. You got to try my chicken. Come in for the chicken. Now I'm prompting a second visit. Not with a printed coupon, a handwritten yeah. card. Now he comes in yeah. for the second visit, drops the business card on the table. Everybody knows this is a second visit because Red Napkin was the first yep. visit. Second visit, oh you finish God. the meal, you go up, you say, so how was the chicken?